I think it's very important for uh, there to be an inclusive arena for free speech. We can speak freely now. Oh, not quite yet, no. It, it, it's just really important that people have the both the, uh, the reality and the perception uh, that they are able to speak freely within the bounds of the law. Is it illegal? It's protected free speech. One of the things that I believe Twitter should do is open source the algorithm. So there's, there's no sort of behind the scenes um, manipulation, either algorithmically or manually. You know you're gonna get in trouble. Don't think he cares. And it spreads through the media like wildfire. Billionaire Elon Musk, who just bought into the company a few weeks ago and just made a take it or leave it offer for the whole damn thing, all of Twitter. Can he do that? Yes, I believe he can. When Elon Musk is involved, you know the sparks will fly. The Tesla and SpaceX CEO telling an audience overnight at the TED conference that he sees his buyout of Twitter as, quote, extremely important to the future of civilization. So is this all a troll or is this very real? Well, it's real enough that he filed with the SEC. It's real enough that he's saying this is my best and final offer. It's real enough that investors are now wondering what's going to happen if he pulls out and sells all the shares he already has. He was evasive when asked about what he'd do if his offer is rejected. Is there a plan B? There is. <laughs> and yet he wouldn't quite say what that plan B is. Some of the things he's talked about, bringing people back onto the platform, maybe people who have been kicked off of Twitter under a new world order of Elon Musk owning Twitter, suddenly you see people back on that platform who have been banned. That's a good thing, right? No, yes, it's definitely a good thing. He thinks that they aren't doing well on free speech. Well, you know, news to Elon, Twitter does not have a free speech. And I think that the dangerous, you know, edges here are that he's trying to undermine the media, trying to make up his own facts. He could have undermined the messaging so much that he can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that if, is the that is our you, job. Did you say anything that might have triggered her? If somebody's only there because Jack Dorsey was a liberal, then that's their choice and they should go someplace else. John. That's the fact, Jack! That's the fact, Jack! Who's that ADL guy, Andrew? This is his worst nightmare, I think. Jonathan uh, Greenblatt. <laughs> yep. It's going to be... Jonathan Greenblatt. I mean, if he owns the whole place, it's going to be like, go for it. He specializes in free speech issues. You go for it. And the orange man probably going to be back. And I, 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 this is unbelievable. The stock up 13%. Unbelievable, right? Jumping on this news. <clears throat> I mean, I think this is basically going to put Twitter back against the wall. They're going to either have to accept it through a strategic process. But, you know, I, I, there's really no way that Twitter, in my opinion, could, could reject this. Because ultimately, you know, from a fiduciary perspective, he put such a premium here, and obviously he has the cash, that now it backs against the wall. And, and really, I think the street's going to read this as Twitter's going to get sold, and ultimately it's Musk that's going to buy it. Here's until 2016, and you tweeted today, maybe pick up 9% of one of the top U.S. greenhouse gas emitters like Chevron or Exxon and accelerate their paths to clean energy. What is your initial reaction to Elon buying this stake? I, I'm actually really worried about him. Aw, he is depressed. Why is he depressed? He's suicidal. Suicidal? I see what you did there. If anything in this life is certain, if history's taught us anything, it says you can kill anyone. Yeah, I ended that a little bit, uh, a little bit macabre, a little uh, melancholy there at the end. But uh, I couldn't help but think that uh, as I'm watching him go through this process. Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> We're live right now on all platforms, so we are live on Rumble um, for the second time now. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. So. And and here's Brenda Edwards. So, guys, I'm having trouble again putting up comments on the screen. I, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, but I do, everything works when I do it in test. But then when I uh, when I try to do it live, uh, not so much. 
So for now, I'm going to just read them out. So Brenda Edwards, thank you so, so very much for this information. VOG, BCE, Kentucky, USA. Hey, Kentucky representing. There we go. So, so yeah, um, I, I wanted to kind of start this off. If you're, if you're fairly new to the channel, um, we've been around now for one year. And really six months of it, uh, we've been doing it correctly. <laughs> Although I should say, you know, in, in the end, we actually have done some good things in the past um, that I'm pretty proud of. So um, we did some great, uh, we did some great stuff in the very beginning. We just the formatting and the way it was done didn't get a ton of viewers and was making it a really slow start. We were doing like an hour episode every week, and and then. You know, from there, it would be, you know, it was just once a week. So you're hoping that video gets all the traction. Nobody knows who you are. You know, you got to put up more content. We later learned, um, among other things. So, but, you know, as we went through the struggle, I wanted to just kind of give everybody an idea of where we started and, and where we're at right now and what we're about. So, you know, we started out, this whole channel started because Jack and I, who can't be here with me today, but Jack and I had kind of... You know, we were sitting on having conversations about all these issues that are going on. And, you know, we talk about legislation. We talk about different things going on. And it, and it became obvious that a lot of people that we know, um, amongst many others, as we've now realized, um, really don't know how to research their own information. And, you know, and it's not it's not like self-explanatory either. Like if you're just jumping on Google trying to look stuff up, you're killing yourself. It's the worst search engine in the world. And, and it's not because it's it, they're of an evil plot or anything like that. Their algorithm, what, what they make money, their algorithm is not designed to give you information as much as it is designed to give you advertising. So, And in that design comes the, the algorithm that, that works hard to put everything in front of you that you want to see. So when you're looking for something, when you're looking for contrary opinions, when you're looking for factual information that's not that may not be in line with what you think now, then you're not going to find that on Google. It's going to fill pages up with, with craziness. So utilize neutral search engines. DuckDuckGo is the one that we always use, um, but there are others out there. But we wanted people to learn these these little tricks and tips. We put some things on our website for them to look up legislation, how to find your own legislature, things like that. And then it kind of evolved. So we stumbled upon upon Article 5, I would say, about a month or two in. And after about a month of researching it, we kind of went nuts on Article 5. And we absolutely believe that that is the path to, to really tackle the, the huge problems, the ones that seem like they're so great, like spending, right? How do you tackle the national debt, right? Like, like there's a way to tackle it. There's a way to do it. And, and Article 5 is that way. I'm not going to get deep into Article 5 at this moment just because I have other videos. I have plenty of videos out there on Article 5. I just kind of wanted to let you guys know, um, you know, because those that follow the channel or subscribe to, to the YouTube channel or follow our page or, you know, on MeWe and, and elsewhere, you're going to see a lot of convention estates. You're going to see a lot of Article 5. We do a lot of updates when new things happen, when there are breakthroughs. There's a lot of movement this year. Um, but the bottom line is, Local state legislatures are the most powerful people, most powerful politicians in this country, and we need to get back to realizing that, right? And right now, so you know what the progress is, we're still at 19 states. We've got more coming, though, shortly. Um, we need 34 in total to call the convention to amend the Constitution, and, and, um, and that gets done without the federal government being involved. So the, what we'll do, there'll be term limits for all government officials. That's all government officials, not just Congress. That includes Supreme Court. That includes Deep State. So that creepy guy that does the black budget, yeah, him too. Um, we're talking fiscal restraints. So think balanced budget amendment, bringing the dollar back to, to, to its to where it belongs as the, as the world standard and not just there because it's by default, but actually earn that place as the world standard. And then, uh, and then restrictions on government overreach, which we had a, a nice court decision today uh, on government overreach. That was by uh, Judge Kim, Kim, uh, Catherine Kimball Mazel, sorry, uh, a, a Trump appointee from no, nowhere else but Florida, right? So representing from Florida, she came through for us, uh, blocked the mandates on travel. I just got off a plane myself. I didn't wear my mask anyway, but like just the idea that it's no longer mandatory uh, is, is awesome. So very happy to see that as well. 
Um, all right, so let's get into uh, let's get into Elon Musk a little bit. And, and by the way, if you if you're watching now, for those that are on, uh, please do me a favor and share this video. Um, whether you share it while it's live or you want to jump in and share it afterwards. Hey, Sheila, how are you? I see you out there. Um, you know, if you want to share it now or share it after, but ever since we started the topic of of the Great Reset and kind of started, you know really talking about what the World Economic Forum is trying to lay out for everybody, our, our, our distribution has just fallen off a cliff. The first few videos of it were tremendous. They, you know, we were 50,000, 80,000 views on Facebook and, you know, about 2,000 or so on YouTube. And, and then all of a sudden, poof, <laughs> it dropped significantly. So, and, and now I think that the, they're starting to fall. They're around 1,200 now or something like that. So uh, we really do need the organic, uh, the organic sharing going on in, in, order to, uh, in order to get this message out. So if you're not aware, Elon Musk um, had um, <laughs> he's taken on Twitter. So, and, and I don't know if he's aware that he's taken on a lot more than Twitter, but like it, the, I put that intro video together because it, I wanted you to just get an idea to how the media is reacting to this because I'm fascinated by this entire thing. Normally I could care less about this sort of thing, but, but right now I'm fascinated because it's not often that a guy has $43 billion um, to be able to just purchase uh, a company like Twitter. Now, as the social media companies go, Twitter is not one of the big ones, even though it may seem that way. But the, the, from a user standpoint, it doesn't have nearly the base that a Facebook, you know, or or some of these other ones do. So, but the thing about Twitter is, is that it's often where politicians go to leave their message. It's often where people of power go to leave their messages. And and so the, a lot of discourse can come from that. And Elon Musk apparently was pissed off at the fact that there's so much censorship on there. And I think he fully understands, you know, we did a piece we did a piece meant months and months ago uh, with Dr. Shiva um, and his lawsuit about the in Boston over there in Massachusetts, where where they're they're actually fighting to prove that there's collusion between and he had a ton of evidence and was doing phenomenal. I, I, I don't I don't see as much on that case anymore, uh, but I do check in on it from time to time. Uh, but these things take take forever. So I'm not shocked. But uh, but his case was doing wonderful, and he decided to defend himself because no lawyer would take his case. Just like the whole election, the whole election, you know, thing that went down, no lawyers would would take any, anyone's case. Same thing for him. But this guy just happens to have four MIT degrees, and is just a brilliant human being, and decided to take on his own case and fought for this very thing, and and was demonstrating that that the government in Boston was absolutely colluding with Twitter. They had their own hotline and everything. He was demonstrating all of this in court. Um, and, it, and, and now, you know, same things never, they never stopped. Right. And, and Elon Musk has made references to this from time to time, but now he's gone ahead and he's bought 9.2% of the company. Now that makes him the single, the single largest individual to own shares in Twitter. Now, that's, he doesn't own the most shares out of any entity. Um, BlackRock and and um, BlackRock and Vanguard still stand atop the Yahoo finance list. I just checked it today, but barely. Actually, that's not true. BlackRock is below Elon Musk right now. So Vanguard has a nine point two two share uh, of Twitter. So he's he's you know what is it two hundredths of a of a point below below Vanguard. So you can bet that he's on people's radar, right? And it, because it you know Vanguard is not the kind of company that that likes to take a back seat when it comes to owning, you know, being top dog and owning something. And if they do, it's going to be to another company that they own like BlackRock, right? So in, in the end, watching him step into this game you know, and I've read his his attitude towards BlackRock and Vanguard is that he hopes that they'll work with him, and he hopes, like, like he concerns me in that way because I don't think he understands like how serious these people can be, and I don't know how important Twitter is to them. So you know, but I would think that it is pretty important. When I watch the media meltdown, you know, you can see the examples in that intro video where you know that that one woman was just saying straight out, she's like. 
like if he if he gets control of Twitter, I mean he he could control all the information and and control what people think. Well, that's our job. Like literally said that out loud. I, I was just I floored when I heard that. I was just floored when I heard that. But it's refreshing to at least hear someone say it out loud. You know because because that's we all know we all know the media is in the tank. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. The media is on the left side. That's for damn sure. All right, you got talk radio on the right, and you got Fox News sort of, kind of, sort of on the right. You know, our second episode, it was our second episode ever, you know, we were putting Fox News on blast because they were censoring, censoring Newt Gingrich for something that he said that was 100% true, and we dedicated half the episode to proving it, that, that the DAs that are on many of these cities that are being torn down and burned down by these psycho organi- psycho Marxist organizations like BLM and, and Antifa, those cities are all run by Soros funded DAs. And and if you if you don't think they are, if you're out there thinking no, they're not, go to our website. I've got links to the entire campaign finance trail. The entire thing. You can go there and just see for yourself. You're going to see pack after pack after pack, all the social and safety justice packs that fund all of these DAs in Portland, all over the place. Portland, I, I believe it was St. Louis. There, we, we, we did like four of them, five of them at the time. And this was over a year ago. All right. But each one that we did, we linked to their campaign finance to the state's website disclosure, not to like a Fox News article that says they, that they donated. All right, so we'd read it in an article, and then we'd go find the source information, and it is all listed on our website. There wasn't enough room in the description to put it all in the description because it was a lot. But if you if you go back, that is definitely an entertaining episode to watch. So I would encourage you to check it out um, because it was definitely it was definitely it's our second episode ever. It was long; it's about an hour and fourteen minutes or so. Uh, we we covered some stuff from. Uh, from an undercover op in 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 uh, some of these organizations, some of these Marxist organizations recruiting children, and then we went into that. So anyway, uh, getting back to uh, getting back to Elon Musk. So here he is um, now. Mark Cuban was was making comments uh, regarding Elon Musk, and um, Mark Cuban's comments were that he thinks he's trolling him. And he thinks, or he not, he thinks not Twitter. He's not trolling Twitter. He, Mark Cuban thinks he's trolling the SEC. And, and I'm kind of sitting here saying, I ain't seeing it that way. Now, there's a lot of unknowns with Elon Musk. There's no doubt about that. So we have to wait and see. And I'm curious to know what you guys take is on this because you know the way I'm seeing it is like he doesn't really care if he makes money off of this. I mean, he so much has said it that I'm not really concerned about the economics, although he does believe that that if he takes it private, that he can go ahead and make it more profitable, and, and he can unlock a lot of potential that he sees that Twitter has. Now, on a personal level, I don't really like the platform. I, I, I just waited to hear Trump tweets and other tweets. Like, the news always gives them to you. I never I never wanted to get involved with that platform. I just I didn't get on with Parler when that came out. I'm on there, but I don't use it that much because I don't like the way that it I don't like the way that it operates. I don't like the whole at thing and ha- you got to keep you know following you know like like I the way the following works and the way all that like I subscribe to a page if I want to see posts from it. That's it. I don't need to follow. There's no movie star that I care about enough that I want to see what they do every day. There just aren't. Like there just aren't. If I want to see your stuff, I know where to go find it, and, and I'll go find it. But anyway, maybe I will give it a shot if you know if it becomes truly an open forum. And, and I'm curious to know in the comments as well. You know, if you're not on Twitter now, would you get on if Elon Musk took the company private and just opened up speech on it or and, and allowed people to speak? Or would you? Or if you're on there, would you leave if Elon Musk took it and and was suddenly allowing people to speak? <clears throat> because I see the issue as being, you know, disinformation is fine. Like it's on you to you know the media is giving us disinformation constantly. I mean the the, the litany of garbage that came out on this Ukraine situation. 
I mean, with video games in the background and these stories of fighter pilots that don't exist taking out six planes, ten planes in a day or a week or whatever. And, and then, you know, the, the Snake Island story. And, like, like, so do we ban all of these media organizations off Twitter and these other platforms because they've clearly been giving disinformation? No, it's up to us to figure out what's disinformation. Because disinformation, like mostly every right now, the conspiracy theorists, quote unquote, are are beating on the media on the first wave of any story that's come out since COVID. They're, they're up like 80 to one. I can't even think of the one, but I'm assuming there must have been one. But like it, it's ridiculous how many times they that these so-called conspiracy theorists with disinformation like the Wuhan lab source for the for the you know the gain of function research fauci's history you know all of these things that that people are getting thrown off of youtube and thrown off of different platforms for for talking about and and yet you know 6 months later a year later everyone starts realizing it's all true like it's just amazing to me how how that operates and how that works. So like it, like let everybody speak. Let everybody say what they want to say. You know, let the let the QAnon lady talk about JFK Jr. coming through time and and you know coming back from the fu- or going back to the past or coming into the future. I forget what it was. And saving us all. Like like let them say these things. And why does that? Why would you know? It's on you to figure out what's correct and what's not we're way past the days of being able to watch walter cronkite on on the nightly news and and figure we got all the news for the day we're we're way past that we've got generations of, of children who now who are now adults who have been taught some of the most bizarre stuff and believe it wholeheartedly believe they've been completely retaught history and they believe it wholeheartedly all right, that's the world we live in today, and, and there's no hope of of re edu- You know, like there's no hope of getting those people to turn around. They either open their eyes and red pill, or or they stay where they are. But like, you know, Elon Musk sees all this stuff, and, and the, the difference between Elon Musk and everybody else is that Elon Musk has like two hundred and fifty billion dollars as an individual. Which is now, mind you, a lot. It's not all liquid cash, right? So, which is why even the forty-three billion purchase is a little bit, you know, he could do it. There's no doubt he could do it, but it's not as like it's not like he has forty-three billion, you know, just right there in the bank. So, you know, when it comes to stuff like that, he'd have to sell some shares of Tesla and some shares of SpaceX. You know, probably liquidate some other stuff that he's got going on. But the beauty of this whole thing is that he has Twitter by the cojones. Twitter can't do anything. Right now, they're in a position, and this is another fascinating thing that I'm waiting. There's so many things about this that fascinate me. Number one, are they going to militarize, like weaponize the SEC? Like, my guess is yes. My guess is that it won't be long before the SEC is looking into, is looking into Tesla, looking into, like, just looking for stuff. Because this is why, this is why we have regulations. All right. This is why, you know, Ronald Reagan said this. So like, you know, there's nothing if the government wants to arrest you, you you're constantly breaking laws constantly and you have no idea you're breaking them. But they've written so many that that they can walk into any business. Yeah, that's right, Scott Morris. Anything to shake stuff up. Absolutely. So that's coming from Facebook. So I, I still don't have the ability to pin. Unfortunately, so I got to just kind of roll with and read out what I have. I will get that figured out, though, folks. Trust me. But, uh, but yeah, so, you know, all of these things that, that, that are going down, Elon Musk sees these. I think he sees these things. I, I mean, and this is where I say I worry for him. That's why I ended that video the way I did. And, and because in, in the end, you know, when you start stepping, money is power, but it's not the kind of power that these people, like just the mere having money, like he's richer than any one of those individuals, but he's not more powerful than those individuals. And there's a significant, there's a significant difference between the two. All right. And I always tell this to people, like there, there's, there's power that comes with politics 
and there's power that comes with money. Normally, if a politician has been around long enough, they have some degree of both. But in the end, if they don't have as much money as you, and you own a massive company, they can still do more harm to you than you can do to them. They can still make your life more miserable than you can make theirs. And it's important to understand that. So my fear, you know, is, you know, all right, are we going to start hearing that Elon Musk is depressed and, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, you know, unfortunately, Elon Musk, you know, God forbid, you know, took his own life or got into an un- unfortunate car accident or was robbed on the street and, you know, and it went and it went south. And next thing you know, you know, he passed. And like, that's the kind of stuff that's been happening to a lot of people who do the kind of stuff that Elon Musk does. Now, my attitude is that it probably won't happen because he's so popular and so famous that like, it's difficult to, you know, it's difficult to do that and not warrant you know, some serious, you know, they'd much rather make him out to be a loon than I think, than, than it would be to, to do something like that and try and make a martyr out of him. But it's going to be interesting when he takes it private because taking it private, you know, and, and I almost feel, you know, I, I almost feel like these companies should, all of these companies should be private so that there's somebody accountable. Because these public companies, nobody's accountable. And it's like, you, you put a face to it and say Zuckerberg's responsible for Facebook and Instagram. But it's like, he's really not. He's really not. I, I mean, in the end, he still technically answers to a board. I mean, he's got, you know, he's got his stuff written in there pretty well, according to Musk. Apparently, he looked at it. So, so I think Musk was considering Facebook at one point because uh, the way he talks about it sounds like he was considering it. But I think Facebook is just far too large <coughs> for even even the richest man in the world to just step in and buy. So, but but in the end, you know, he can do that, and he's shaking up the scene right now. And and this the significance here is that it breaks the monopoly on information, right? It breaks the monopoly on information. And when I say the monopoly on information, I'm not saying there's no other source of information, but on the major social media platforms where, let's face it, most even me, most of my rabbit holes that I go down and start researching, I stumble upon on Facebook or, or you know, on some social media platform. And, and in the end, you know, I'll see it and then I'll have to go verify it. But like, I would have never even seen it had it not been for these platforms. So... I'm actually very happy uh, that they exist to speak to some degree because we can't do this without them. Like we have to have a method of sharing information. And and again, that's kind of where, so that's kind of what the Patriot think tank has evolved into. So I get emails, I get messages, I get people are commenting. If you read, if you look through our videos, you'll see that I engage virtually every comment, um, at minimum with a like, if it's addressing something and, and wants a response, then I can assure you that they get a response. But like this back and forth that we have, I mean, I, I've talked to so many people, I've showed so many people, you know, Article 5 was not dangerous and, and, and gave them the tools and the information because they inquired, you know, and, and that type of engagement is significant. You know, you see, you never win a fight, never win an argument on the Internet. I do. I win them all the time when it comes to Article 5 because there are a lot of conservatives out there who just and, and conservatives more so than any the young people is difficult. Some I've gotten, but like they're really entrenched in, in what they the, their beliefs just go all over the place. And like I, I, I part of me feels like Gary Bezmanov was right and that they're lost. But like on some at least on on some major issues. I mean, when you get pe- when you get generations of people who can't tell a man from a woman, it, it's hard to get into a complicated constitutional discussion with them. <laughs> but but at the same time, there are a lot of people out there who legitimately read some stuff. You know, maybe they saw it from the John Birch Society or some of the other. There's a few other um, conservative groups that are that are preaching the Marxist message on this issue, and like they hear this stuff and they get scared. But then, you know, I start showing them Madison's notes. I start showing them Federalist Papers. I start showing them actual document. I'm not giving them an article. And and they realize that all they have to rebut me with are articles. And, And in most cases, I'm telling them before they even send it, I'm like, 
Don't even bother me with that Publius nonsense. Don't bother me with, with that with that Freedom Society article. I've read it a million times. Spare me, spare me the room in my comments. I know how John Birch Society feels about it. And then they have nothing. And then it's like, well, that's all the articles I have. You know? and, and so whereas I'm giving them stuff that they not only haven't seen or read before, but is totally changing the way that they look at the history of this country. And, and, and I'm doing it with actual documents. So there's a big difference. So Brenda Edwards says, I'm, I'm for those who are for freedom of speech. I'll listen to anyone, but, they will, but will they listen to me? Amen. Yeah, so we don't know if they'll listen to you, right? I, I mean, you got to kind of pick your fights, right? If if you know you're dealing with a coconut, you know, you, you get into it a little bit. You have some back and forth. But if they, you know how you usually know when someone's locked in and has no case and it doesn't matter that, like, they won't acknowledge that they have no case and they just want to keep going is when they start insulting you. When they start popping off insults and, and all that, you know, that's when you know that, like, all right, this is a person who's not interested in, in new information. They, they, they've, they've been preached to by someone, all right, whether, you know, sometimes it's on the right, too. There are some people on the right who, on the far, far right, who believe some weird crap. So, like, you know, and, and, but they've been preached to for so long, and, and they're so embedded in what they think that they can't change that, right? And, and the only way someone snaps out of that, you know, that Brandon Stroker guy, you know, I don't have an image of him now, but he started that hash, hashtag walkaway movement. Like, like I saw that movement as being amazing. Now, this was, you know, he's a white gay dude who I think he was living in New York City. I don't remember uh, the city. It was a major city, though. And, and, like, one day it just hit him that, like, that the left, that the left in his city were using gay people as political pawns. And he realized that, that you know, and I forget, he gave us, he gave a talk on it. As to what it was that happened to him that made him realize that they really didn't give a damn, but his eyes opened. Now, you know, in his case, I, you know, personally, I would like to take him a step further and let him realize conserv the conservative Republican politicians, I should say, they don't really give a damn about you either, those people that are in office right now. Now, there's some in office who do, but they're few. And, and the fact is, you know, this has become, it's become so infected with that nonsense and, and this poisonous, you know, Left, right, left, right. It's just, it's nothing more than a divisive tactic. Which is another reason why I love Article 5. It's another reason why I cling to it so much and I won't let it go. And, and because in the end, it's the issues that we're talking about with Article 5 are fairly universal. I mean, they poll very well for all sides of the aisle. I mean, Democrats are about 55% in support of the amendments. You know, Republicans obviously are more than that. They're somewhere in the 70s. And then independents fall about 65 or so. You know, and, and this, this goes by the nationwide polls. When they do them state to state, they come into similar numbers. Because these issues, like term limits, government overreach, I mean, we're all affected by this stuff. If you're a Democratic voter and, and, and you were just told and you were hesitant to take the vaccine for whatever reason, whether it's because you just didn't want it, maybe you thought it was, it was poisonous, maybe you just have a health condition and you're not sure how it's going to react to it, or you know, maybe it's a religious reason that you don't want to take it, whatever. But if you're a Democrat and you just don't want to take it and you went through that hell of almost losing your career and your livelihood, well, then, yeah, you're supporting government overreach amendments, right? And, and you're not asking what side is putting up the amendment. You don't care. You just want the damn thing done. You just want them to stop having the ability to do these crazy, crazy things. I, I mean, this, this run that we've done with COVID, I mean, there's no other explanation I can personally come to. And, and I, again, I'd love to hear what people think about it, but, like, there's no explanation that I can personally come to about that whole process with all the weird mask rules and all the, all the bizarre stuff, all right? The overblowing of it, the not allowing people to get treatments that thousands and thousands of doctors are using globally successfully and, and like lying about studies like that freaking, uh, uh, what's the name of that? It's like one of the most popular journals out there. Starts with an L. I forget the name, but but anyway, 
they had the fake study there. You know, Fauci's out talking about that. Like, all this creepy stuff is going on, and, and we're all just kind of rolling with it. And, and I'm just kind of, it was almost like we all just became zombies. And I, I just want, like, no one stopped to think that the things that you're asking them to give you back were already yours. Right? When, when they tell you, you know, COVID has done damage to this country and to this world, COVID hadn't done that damage. They did. World leadership did that damage. They're the ones who were making one horrible decision after another. And, and it's just like, and they sit there and then they turn around and say, oh, well, COVID, you know, COVID taught us. COVID taught us. No, you taught us. You taught us that you're some creepy freaking people up there. <clears throat> and it's important that, that people like come to that realization. You know, I talk to this all the time. You got to be a little bit humble in, in the way that you see things or the way that you saw things if you already started seeing, right? So like I put this shirt together because once you see, you cannot unsee. And, and I say it all the time on the show because it's incredibly true. It's incredibly true. Right. And underneath in very small print, it says the great hashtag, the great reset, hashtag BlackRock, hashtag Disney, just a bunch of hashtags, hashtag save the children. And I, and I made them small so that you have to walk up to see it. <laughs> I, I made them small intentionally so that someone actually has to make an effort to see it. Right. It, it's like symbolism. Like, like, OK, what does that say? I can't see it. I can't see it. Get closer. Like you got to make an effort to see it because that's the way. You have to live your life. You have to make an effort to see these things. You can't go through life saying, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Oh, I don't want to talk. About oh, this is one of those people that are going to talk about great resets and, and all that stuff. Oh, this is one of those people. Like, you can't be that person anymore. You could have been, you know, 10 years ago. You shouldn't have been. I was 10 years ago. Right. I, I was cheering on the Patriot Act. I was cheering on more than that. 20 years ago, I was cheering on the, the Patriot Act. I was cheering on the war in Iraq. I thought it was going to I bought the narrative. I was all in. I was arguing with people o over how it makes sense and, and how there was no way for us to know that, you know, or they got the weapons out before we got there or, you know, whatever, whatever the, the narrative was, I was chomping it up and, and I was freaking rolling with it. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy Burns, I need that shirt, George. <laughs> it's so true. It is true. It's very true. This shirt's actually going to be, I'm going to make it available. This was the first, I had this printed just so I could see uh, how it looks, but, but I actually really liked it. So I am going to put it in the t-shirt store. You could get there through our website, check in a day or so. I haven't put it up yet. Uh, we do have a lot of other cool stuff in there though, as well. So, um, definitely will not miss the opportunity for a shameless plug there. But um, we have another one here. What's this? I was against. I was against every move they made. None of it made. None of it made sense. And if you're on another channel, and you're wondering. You're like, hey, I'm the only one watching on this channel. Like that happens on Twitch a lot. The comments are coming from four different channels. So you may only have one or two people on yours, or three or four people. But then there might be seven or eight on another one. So just you know, bear with me on it. Normally, I'll, I'll post the comments up. Unfortunately, the software comes with a widget that doesn't is not allowing that to happen it's kind of driving me insane but um but all right but it says uh, i was against every move they made none of it made sense my doctor said if you got sick not 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 to come to the clinic really you're my doctor yeah exactly really you're my doctor and, and we're talking now look i've had covid twice i got it very early and i wasn't sure if that was covid that i had until i got it again which was recent maybe a few months ago and and the fact is okay it sucked but like i got over it like it was one really bad day some people have my wife had four bad days but like and she's vaccinated how funny is that the irony but like, whereas I had one bad day, my kids were largely unaffected. You know, my daughter got a little bit with it and, you know, a day or so of not feeling so well. She didn't have that really bad day. But like, we all went through it and it's like, it's not scary. There's just nothing scary about it. Like pointing to me, pointing to me, these 85 year old people with heart conditions and this and that, those people are the people who die from the flu. They die from pneumonia. They die from, they, they're fragile people. These are people who could die from a lot of things very similar to COVID. But people that don't normally die from those things generally don't die from those things. 
Like you need to have some sort of condition in place. It's incredibly rare. We're talking about a ninety. We're talking about a disease with a or a virus with a ninety-seven or was it ninety-nine point nine seven success rate to get through. I, I mean, this, but they took this and they changed the whole friggin' narrative for the world. Like, they changed the whole narrative for the world. I mean, they literally, and still today, you know, the, the World Economic Forum guys are preaching it. You know, I, I've shown you unlimited amount of videos of them saying, you know, and you can look, you can go to YouTube and just go to World Economic Forum's YouTube channel. They're, ever since 2020, these, these Economic Forum meetings are no longer under the covers. I mean, I, I was stunned at how open they were. I had watched some of these in the past, what they'd let you see, and... and there were some hints of stuff like this, but never like like they do like now they talk to you like it's all now there's like advertising. It's like insane. When I saw the you know the the poster they put out, I think it was a few years ago, uh, but I only saw it recently. But uh, a couple of years ago they put it out and where with the kids smiling and it says you'll own nothing and be happy like like that's a that you got some kind of cojones if you're gonna go ahead and say that out loud. Like you got some kind of, and that ain't it. They'll tell you, they they talk about it matter of factly. They're not like, we hope everyone agrees with this. We hope this is something. That, no, they're like, nope, COVID has showed us that, you know, that the global system is, is fractured and, and we need to, you know, and we need to make changes and, and interweave everything and, and, and let's go globalist. And, and that's what, that's what the attitude is. That should scare the de- that should scare you to death. If you don't understand what going globalist means, it means they have to take down things like, you know, the US dollar. Like like they're trying to get us, they're trying to knock us down. Because they can't bring everybody else up in their current systems to where we are, even in the struggle that we're in now. Everyone else is still far below. So in order to make get this equity that they want, they have to knock us down. That means knock you down. All right? And, and there's only one way for you to fight that. There's only one way for you to fight that. All right? And it's this creepy. This is some of the creepy bunch right here. All right? And, of course, the devil leading the way, right? So, so you know, how all these things tie in, you know, I know that these people are definitely not working on the side of God. That's for damn sure. Which only leaves one alternative, right? But like but in the end, when when you whether you're religious or, or not religious, it doesn't matter because a lot of these freakazoids believe in this garbage. All right? A lot of these freakazoids believe in the occult. Okay? And when I say believe in it, I don't mean I, I believe in, in hell as well. All right. I, I believe in the devil just from a faith perspective. But like whether or not this is the devil doing these things, like there's a lot of creepy stuff going on in Hollywood and everywhere else. Kind of make you want to kind of make you think that. But in the end, it doesn't matter. Even if you're an atheist, they believe it. Like all these people with money and power, they believe this stuff. So you could be like, there's no devil. Ha 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 ha. Well, it doesn't matter. The, the people who think it there is are like worth ridiculous sums of money and they want to take everything you own and then rent it back to you. Cause that's, you know, that's how you make people happy apparently. Right. So the Elon Musk's of the world are going to play this out. And like, I don't know how big of a thorn in, in these people. I can't think that he doesn't know. Like I can't, you know, it, it, it'd be like, you know, it's just impossible. There's no way he doesn't know. Now, he's very eccentric, and he doesn't hang out in these circles and those types of things. I get it. And there's definitely an element of, uh, element of this where, like, people like Trump didn't know. Like, I'm, I'm 100% positive that when Trump came into office, he was stunned by half the crap that he saw in office. And, like, I'm just stunned. I, I, that he was stunned, I mean. Like, I, I'm 100% positive of that. That he walked in there thinking, I'm going to clean this swamp, I'm going to do this. And, and, like, people just, like, from, you know, different areas of the military, different areas of, of, of maybe, you know, maybe the secretary positions. People, you know, people who have been there for a long time, some of the good people who don't like the stuff that are going on were probably telling him some stuff that was making him go, holy crap, what did I just get myself into? 
And then him being him was just like, come on, let's fight. Right. But, but like, let's face it. Every president that's tried to tackle these people seems to get, you know, anyone who gets in the way of these globalists, presidents included, seems to take a bullet. Right. We had Kennedy who was outspoken against this stuff. We all know that story. Right. And then what? Then we get Reagan. Right. We get Reagan again. All about the United States, America first, whole nine yards. He takes a bullet. Right. And then, of course, you know, here comes, uh, you know, here comes uh, Trump. He gets away without the bullet. So, you know, probably just because security is that much better now. I, I, I don't know. But like in the end, most of these people take bullets. Right. And, and it's like it takes. You know, somebody like Elon Musk to not know these things with the money that he has just seems crazy to me. So then it's like, well, I don't know how to take him. I don't, I, I want to take him as somebody who's just who's just all about, you know, all about free speech and, you know, and, and that there are other areas. I mean, obviously the left consider him an uber conservative, psycho, you know, rightist. You know, I, I don't see him that way at all. I just see him. He's like Howard Hughes to me. Like, like he's just like an eccentric billionaire who likely will innovate a ton of things before he passes, assuming, you know, there isn't an unfortunate accident. But like, but what does that mean in the scope of everything that's going on? Like, like, is he an enemy of the world economic forum? Or is, you know, is he want to be in that club and is just saying, no, I just, it's just a free speech thing for me. Right. So so it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. I'm very fascinated by Elon Musk. I, I never really thought twice about him before. I just thought, oh, he's like Howard Hughes, just kind of waiting for him to go crazy and, you know, and like lock himself in a room forever. <clears throat> and Brenda Edwards says, great message. I agree. With, I agree with you, Mr. George. Thank you, Brenda. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. You know, and and if there's someone there that doesn't agree, if there's someone like, hey, you're crazy, you know, <laughs> you're nuts. None of this stuff is happening, you know, et cetera. I, I'm more than welcome to discourse. I'm more than welcome to discourse, either in the comments or anywhere else. Normally, we get a few devout communists on Twitch, which is why I leave them up. <laughs> we don't get a lot from Twitch, but I don't promote Twitch at all. But like when we get something from Twitch, there's two things I like from Twitch. One that we get people from all over the world and that two, we get opposing opinions almost exclusively. We don't get any, there are like no conservatives on all of Twitch. I, I don't know if conservatives don't like, don't like gaming channels or whatever, but like, but there are no like conservatives that ever pick up on Twitch, which I find fascinating. So I keep them on for that reason. I literally had someone a couple of weeks ago tell me, uh, they're, they're like, I'm a communist. What are you? <laughs> I'm like, you see my backdrop, buddy? <laughs> like, like I can tell you there's a lot of things that you could assume I am, but one thing you're never going to assume I am is a communist. <laughs> that, that would be the worst guess ever, right? So, so I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, I'm just curious to know. You know, I mean, we've got about 18 people on right now across the platform. So, like, you know, <clears throat> if someone has an opinion on it, and if you're on Rumble, uh, you'll have to – you can – I have you open separately on Rumble. Um, so I don't have Rumble streaming in with my main chat. I have YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook on that. But I have Rumble open to the right of me, and I'm checking it. But it doesn't appear. We've gotten some viewers, but I haven't gotten any comments. So um, just to – to put that in perspective. And if you jumped on late, if you could do me a favor, just try to share this content, right? Because we want to get these conversations out. We want to get more people engaged in them. I, I mean, the goal really is to start sharing information. And even after an episode ends, and, and, and if there's something that you picked up or something you have a question on, email me. You can email me at info at the Patriot Think Tank .com, or you can just comment on that video. I keep track of all this stuff. So I'm psycho like that. I keep track all this stuff you got questions on article five maybe you came across one of these john birch people and, and you know you're confused and, and they they tried to scare you with all this madness and it sounded like it made sense just reach out to me just be like hey this is what they told me you know this is the case they made this is why they said it was true and then i will arm you with all of the source information you need to to debunk that 
I, I've been making a living on this now for well, I don't make anything off this channel, so let's not say make a living, but but at the end, you know, I, I've been I've been doing this like it's my job, you know, on multiple platforms, having these debates, you know, really engaging people, really you know, really digging my heels in and trying to get them as much source information as I can to to make the case right and we have a ton of videos on the channel on all the platforms uh that are directly like that that episode was dedicated strictly to article five not so much where you know we'll talk about something crazy going on like the great reset and then tie it in to article five like i'm about to do in like two minutes but like in the end those those are designed to just educate you, right? So one of them is Article 5 for Dummies, um, and then you can watch the episodes on that. just explains what it is, how it works. Our website does the same thing. You can go to conventionestates.com. they got a ton, a wealth of information there. And if you're fired up about it and you want to do something about it, if you're tired... If you're tired of just getting mad on Facebook about it, or, or every day you got to see, you know, another video of Biden falling down the stairs, or, or you know, Kamala Harris doing some heckle laugh at a World Forum, like if you're just tired of seeing this stuff take place, right, with these mandates and with everything, the things that are impacting your life, then know that there's a way to change the big things. Like it's not lost; it we're not lost to a place where. You know, we can't fix this stuff. It, it's the problem that we have is that as a people, as an American people, we've lost touch with how this country is supposed to work. And, and we allowed it to slip away. And I'm guilty of it as much as anyone else. But it's not about pointing blame. It's not about pointing fingers. It's about realizing it. It's about realizing it, coming to that realization, humbling ourselves a little bit, because we did, you know, Every generation has contributed to this problem. I, there's a part of me that doesn't even believe that it's fair to blame Gen Gen Z and and whatnot for you know thinking that there's no such you know that men and women are not you know that there's more than men and women and all these things like like it's because it was the past failures of not realizing what they were pumping into these kids' heads. I mean, look how triggered they got with this HB 1557 that passed in Florida. I, I mean, I, I posted something to my page, to my, to my personal page, that, that basically said, I think there should be a reg I'm, I'm thinking there should be a registry for any, te for any teacher who was angry or quit their job over the passage of that bill because they can't talk about sex with, with fourth graders. Like there's like it is, it's that creepy, but there's a generation of people who believe in that stuff, you know, and, and it's just, it's crazy to me that we've let it come to this point. But what, what gets me more is, is that we're not making, we're moving, we're making efforts, grassroots and all these states are doing a tremendous job. You know, we brought four states on board in three months. That that was, you know, that's a huge feat. We still got Pennsylvania, who looks great to come on this year, Iowa to come on this year. This is all going on locally. This is all going on grass. This is all people in their states getting pissed off, going to their state legislatures. And, and your state legislator is not the same as Congress. You can approach these people. You find out who this person is, and we've got links on almost every state to find your representative. <coughs> That'll take you to Cause's website, by the way where you just put in your address, they locate your representative, sign the petition, they send them a letter right there, boom. But now you got his name, right? You got his name. Throw that in Ballopedia. They'll give you his Facebook page. They'll give you his, his, uh, his Twitter account or whatever he's on, all right? And, and, and you go ahead and start engaging him. Write him a handwritten letter. They talk about these letters in, in session. I can tell you I've watched hours of debate as they debated these Article 5 resolutions, and, and I can tell you, just listening to it, you can feel how local it is. You can feel how, like, and it suddenly makes sense to you why the founders did it this way, why they wrote in Article 5 this way. It suddenly, be, when you watch these legislators talk, you suddenly realize that because they're talking, you never hear this in Congress in in. in the House or the Senate in Washington, where a, someone will come up and they're talking about, you know, 
today, you know, one of my delegates stopped by my office and told me, you know, and then they go on to tell you what they told you. You know, yesterday I got a call from, from one of my constituents. And, and did I say delegate before I meant constituent? So, you know, I got a call from one of my constituents and they told me, you know, X, Y, and Z. And, and you know, I've got a flood of emails coming in. I've got letters coming in. Like, like they know this stuff's coming in. They're paying attention to it. I guarantee you Nancy Pelosi has no idea. Mitch McConnell, these people have no idea. Who's written them? Who's asked what? You know, that stuff is all vetted by staffers and thrown in the trash. Maybe, maybe they give you a generic response back that they give to everybody. Like they just pay somebody to handle that. Like these people are reading this stuff and they're reacting to it. There are people who are standing up in these state legislators, legislature, uh, legislatures, and, and a year ago, two years ago, they were opposed to this. But they went and started researching it because they're like, if this is so bad, how could there be so many freaking of my constituents who who are generally people like me, right? Because that's kind of how you get elected, right? So if they're, if they're people like you that get you elected and they're all telling you to do something that you've been told is crazy, you start reading on it, right? And, and they'll talk about that too. And like, you know, once I started really reading it, once I get into the history, you're now I'm for it. And now you're seeing the states start to come aboard. And, and Joe Biden is like our greatest asset. The more psycho stuff he does, the more states come on board for convention of states. Right? Now we've got, you know, there's probably another... 17 or 18 that can vote on on their resolutions this this year all right 19 are already done so here's a comment in bella vista arkansas our local city election votes are counted in california that's strange (laughs) that's strange i'm not sure what that's all about but uh but yeah saying that they're saying nothing will change uh they'll teach the same without parents even knowing it. And that's the thing is that they teach, they teach this stuff for so many decades without parents knowing what happened when parents found out what happened. Well, last year, school board recalls almost tripled the year before. Okay. Because generations like mine, like generation X, baby boomers, etc., And we're all guilty. Cause this started in like 19, they started doing this stuff in 1955. The hippies were the first ones. That, they, that the Russians were actually celebrating a success with. Like Yuri Bezmenov tells this whole story in like 1984. He was saying three generations in 1984 at that point were indoctrinated, but I, I'm not seeing that much. But because we had Reagan to break it up a little bit. But like, point is, it's been going on for a long time. And, and this kind of garbage has been in our schools for a long time. I've shown in multiple times, I've shown that poster. Uh, that my daughter found in her high school classroom right here in suburbia, California. It's not L.A. It's not Sacramento. It's, it's not uh, San Francisco. But it's a it's a poster. You can Google this. You can Google this on your own. All you have to remember are the words "Welcome to the party" and write "Communism" after it. And you're gonna see Mao Zedong on like DJ tables with a party hat on. They, they've got uh, Stalin, Fidel Castro, Karl Marx is laying down like like and, and it's crazy. They're all wearing. Party hats and it says "Welcome to the party." They've amassed on one poster like five of the biggest murderous killers in in, in modern history, and treated it as if there's a party to be thrown that you're joining, right? Because they're welcoming you to the party. Like if I walk into that classroom, my daughter won't tell me which classroom it or where it is. But like if I walk into that classroom and see something like that, I will walk up right there and rip the friggin' thing off the wall. And then I'll show up next week and rip it down again. If I go to any of her, like, like meet the parents events, which they haven't really been doing because of the whole COVID thing, if those things start again and I walk into a classroom and I see stuff like that, it's coming off the wall, I'm tearing it down. I, I could care less. I could care less. They could try and charge me with vandalism. They could do whatever they want to do. But I'm going to tear it down. I'm going to tear it down for the channel, though. I'm going to go ahead and have it on video so everybody understands what I was looking at before they start talking about I just walked into school and started trashing the place. So here's uh, here's Brenda. Brenda Edwards, stay strong. You're right on. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Absolutely, yes. So, you know, and, and again, you know, I, I will say this, though, from a faith perspective. Faith is a little bit different, but, like, you know, there are some, there's a good amount of people out there who kind of just 
blow everything off and are just like whatever you know it's 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 revel it's revelations and you know Jesus is gonna come he's gonna sort this all out like like no <laughs> like that's that's so you you can't sit by in my if you're a Christian I don't care you know any faith any of the peace loving faiths if you're if you're a person of faith you cannot sit by and watch evil take place and and just say Jesus will handle it. That's a lazy cop out, dude, and it drives me nuts when I hear it. It drives me nuts when I hear it. You know what? I'm gonna be in this battle. When Jesus shows up, it says I got this. All right. Then I'll go ahead and back off and be like, you know what? You got it. <laughs> who am I to you know, who am I to say? But but in the end, until that moment, like there's never a moment where I'm sitting there going, Well, all, all these crazy people will just be you know, all these billionaire sociopaths, they'll just be handled, but you know, Jesus is just gonna come and fix it all. So why even worry about it? Like it's our job to do good. Like and doing good includes not watching evil take place. Like that's a part of the package. All right. You're gonna go ahead and explain, you know, it, what if they take what if Jesus doesn't come until they've already taken it over for a while and, and, and we're suffering for for whatever amount of time. That suffering all falls on you. You did nothing to stop it. But claiming to know Jesus' ultimate plan, you know, outside, I get, I get that the Bible lays out revelations and such, but like Jesus has a way of, of picking the strangest person and, and picking, you know, the, the last person you would think, you know, to do the greatest tasks. And, and like, like never do I sit back and just assume that I know, you know, what he's going to do. Like, if there's evil in front of me, I'm going to confront it. And, and that's period. And everybody should be doing that. And I can tell you right now, the evil in the world that we are confronting needs to be dealt with via Article 5. Because the United States turning around is how the whole game turns around. They have no, they have no superpower level country that's on board with this psychosis. Except us. Like the one country that they have is the most powerful one of the bunch. And it's taken them forever to try and weaken it to the stance that it's at right now. But the fact that we would just sit down and leave the last constitutional bullet in the chamber and just unilaterally disarm ourselves as these psychos come in with their universal basic income and, and buying up all these homes and, and taking over the food supply with this synthetic meat garbage that freaking Bill Gates keeps promoting as he buys up freaking farmland at a, at a ridiculous rate. Like, what does Bill Gates need to be the largest farm owner in farmland owner in the United States? That should creep you out. Right? And somebody like Elon Musk, I want to believe that this guy, like that we got one of these big boys with us. You know? That's what I want to believe. Whether I believe it or not, there's a difference between wanting to believe something and believing it. But right now, it seems to be the case. So I'm going to roll with it. If he gives me a reason to think otherwise, then so be it. <clears throat> but but in the end, you know, I, I think it's important that everybody be that way. And that's why we started this channel a year ago was so that people can start questioning things. People start looking at the world around them and realize what's going on. And realize that critical theory, you know, we've done your early episodes. We're all kind of focused around that critical theory and, and its impact. People like um, I, Ibram X. Kendi and, and what they're actually teaching, make the, the woke military. And, you know, all of these changes have been taking place. Each one's been an isolated issue, but they're all towards the same goal. Okay, when they started, when they started with the six month moratorium so they could go through all the military, all of our military, all our men and women. In, that are serving, they're going through all their social media feeds to find anti, you know, to f not even anti, to find pro-Trump stuff. Like, this is crazy stuff. Like, for, for an American citizen, this is crazy, crazy stuff. It's not crazy if you grew up in China, Russia, you know, e even some European countries. But it's crazy as hell if you grew up here. But lo and behold, it was happening. And lo and behold, they were, they were dishonorably discharging people or maybe not dishonorably for some of them. They were just discharging. Then they started, you know, making examples out of people that wanted to protest the election. 
showing up at their house with, with SWAT vehicles and, and it's just a guy and his daughter. Like you, you can't just continue to just go through life like, well, I'll do whatever they want if they just make sure I can still go to the mall. If I can go get my pizza, you know, and I don't have to, you know, like I don't have to worry about, you know, not getting, I, I can still go to Costco. That's good. I know they shut down all the small businesses, but at least, you know, heck, I go to Costco anyway. I don't, you know, I can live without the small businesses. Just let me go where I want to go. Let me travel. Can I travel? I'll take whatever drug you want if you'll just let me travel. What do I have to do? I have to put on this funny hat. I'll put it on if you just let me go. If you just let me give, if you let me create the illusion that I have freedom, I will do whatever you want. That is where we were, we are descending into. And no one is paying it. Well, not no one. Tons of us now are starting to pay attention to it. But we still have. We still have that 40% who don't get the message. We still have that 40% who are. And when I say 40%, that's off the Solomon Ash study on conformity that's been replicated dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times. You might have seen it on Brain Games where, where the beep goes off and the girl stands up and, and then sits down because everybody in the room was doing it. So she just started doing it. You know, it, it, like that, that's 40% of those people knew what they were doing was completely irrational, but did it anyway because they didn't want to break from the group or, or they just they didn't want to make waves. Like people that don't want to make waves are enabling this madness. Because what's happening is you've got 30% on one side who believe that every time that beep goes off, you absolutely have to stand up and it's meaningful and it has purpose. And then there's another 30% who think that this is all BS. Why the hell do you people keep standing up for some random beep at an eye doctor? And then you got that 40% in the middle who enable the crazy 30%. Why? Because the crazy 30% now think that there are 70%, right? They look up and they see 70% of the population standing up, sitting down, taking their mask, turning around, take it down, smoke, you can take it down, put it back up, blah, blah, blah. Like all, all this craziness, all this craziness. When, when they know that it's not, when they know it does nothing, but they just keep doing it, the 30% swear that there really are 70%. Because if you're that person, because of you. Because you don't want people to look at you if, if someone confronts you and you don't want to take a mask off or, or not do some weird task that they're asking you to do. Like, that has to stop. Everybody needs to just... If it doesn't make sense, don't do it. Like, just don't do it. Since everybody can be bought, it seems... Uh, it's from Barbara Norman... Uh, like that DA in California that reduced the sentence on that gang member. Barbara, this is what I was talking about earlier with with the with our second episode ever. I really encourage everyone to go back and watch that episode. Uh, the second half of it is when we started tackling, because it's an hour and 14 minutes long. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, I get it. But you go to the second half, we, we talked all about um, the DAs that George Soros has been funding. We provided the paper trail on the website. If you go to the episode on our website, you can find it on YouTube as well. But if you go to it on the website, um, it'll still be the YouTube link. But on the on my webpage, I have enough room to put all the sources. And, and you can see where the money ties in. I mean, we went straight to the Portland DA's own website. where And the case that I was making is that it's not black people burning down their own neighborhoods with these BLM movements. It's all young white Antifa kids. The same kids that show up at, at January 6th and, and are smacking these windows with billy clubs and, and doing all that with their shields and all that crap. They're the same organization. But, like, people don't realize that. They show up beforehand. They burn the freaking place down. In, in, the, in the case of the BLM riots, they show up, they burn the freaking buildings, and then... Here comes the march coming through. You watch the episode. It's a good episode. And then and then Gingrich tries to point it out and this Duteru on Fox News and, and her little freaking and her little compadre are like denying that Soros has anything to do with this. That triggered the entire episode. That scene and we we play that scene in the thing. That triggered the entire episode. It's insane to me. But this is where we are. 
and and I don't know if these news people believe this stuff or like like in that case with Newt, like she heard something in her ear. Like she heard something in her ear. Like I'm not sold on Fox either. These people are all freaking tied in with these schmucks too. Like like I'm not even. They keep a Tucker or so around just to you know so they could keep that illusion going. But the whole rest of the crew, right? So Tucker and Hannity are kind of there, and then you've got, you know, the whole rest of the crew getting, get all the, all the in-between show people uh, have all, like, lost their minds. And, and, like, that's, it's just crazy to me that the world, that the country, it's not crazy to me that the world would descend like this. It's crazy to me that this country would descend like this. But yet here we are. Yet here we are. So, and I mean, you know, look, when it comes down to it, right, it's, there's, there's only a limited amount of things that we can do, all right, in the sense of trying to, because it seems like so much, right? You've got all these billionaires. How do you compete with these billionaires? Like, what if they just crash our dollar? What if they just do this? What if, what if they keep with these pathogens and bird flus and, and like, what if that keeps happening? Like, how do you combat that? You combat it by taking over, like, like once the United States is back in good hands. All right, once once our systems are set up where our Congress can no longer spend, you know, a hundred million dollars to study chickens doing cocaine, like once we're back to normal the way it's supposed to run, then we can start looking at these people like, hey, the United States is pissed off. I guess who's in our freaking crosshairs? And all the money in the world's not going to save him then. All the money in the world's not going to save him then. And the dollar will be soaring back, and everything will be starting to, yeah, we'll be making sacrifices too, because we got penance to pay for the damage we've allowed to let happen. So don't get it twisted. If you're sucking, the, if you're sucking on the government tit for something, all right, you can bet that, you know, with a balanced budget amendment, at least for a while, whatever it is that you were, that you were scraping out of there, it's probably not going to be available. People are going to have to learn to live without dependency in the most independent nation ever in the history of this world. That is how far we've descended. So, all right. Well, Barbara, Brenda, (coughs) Kathy, we got um, Sheila, and I believe Scott's in there too. So, uh, plus a few others just want to say thank you for for pitching in. I appreciate it. Um, there is one note that I want to leave you on before I go, and that note is this. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. The greatest trick ever. And like that, 